Welcome everyone to another episode of Dropkick. I am your host. We are your hosts. Yes, there are two of us. As always, we have Darren and myself, Double C, and tonight we have another five hours of wrestling to cover. Yeah, I'm more I'm more interested right now in that comment of this we stuff. Have we turned into the Borg suddenly? Um. Well, I suppose if you are hooked up to wires or. I don't know. Uh, let's not let's not get into that. Uh, uh, we're give, we might give people way too much stuff to <laughs> in our ways. Yeah, okay, we may be a small podcast, but Rule Thirty Seven still applies. Yeah, we're not even thirty episodes old yet, so <laughs> uh, we don't need fanfics. Okay, so first of all, we have SmackDown from the twenty seventh of July, and then afterwards we're gonna do uh, Raw from the thirtieth. Mm-hmm. First was SmackDown. So we start to show off with the new Intercontinental Champion, The Miz. He's the champ now. And he thanks Christian's fans for the match. Because uh, there was a poll about uh, the Raw 1000 episode about which title should be put up for grabs. And it was Christian's Intercontinental title. And, of course, Christian comes out later on and does what he does best. He demands a rematch. Mm-hmm. Like you, like you do. So, they have their rematch. Um, so, the first match of the night, Miz versus Christian for the IC title. Uh, Miz uh, comes out victorious in a very back-and-forth matchup. And... Yeah. That makes logical sense why that would happen. Yeah, and uh, the Miz returns to his uh, heelish ways again, and he he had a handful of tights, and also a major thumb to the eyes. So all is well. Major thumb to the eyes and tights, huh? Yes. That's- which is ironic when you think of that, uh, well, isn't Miz's costume nothing more than undies? Um, he does have, uh, you know, yeah, but <laughs> that's not the God. point. That's classic. That's, you know. Yeah, I know. It's a classic style, but you gotta re- but you gotta realize in the end, you're wearing nothing but a, you're wearing nothing but underwear. There's not much to the imagination. Okay. With that mental image, we move on. Yes, to Jinder Mahal versus Ryback. Gee, I wonder how this goes. Actually, not how you think. Because Jinder Mahal got ex- like a whole bunch of offense in to this particular matchup. Probably the most Ryback has suffered since re-debuting as Ryback. And once Ryback decides to get his head into the game, Jinder Mahal says, nope, I'm done. Walks out for a countout. Oh, that's lame. Yeah, it is, but it looks like they're going to have a rematch, and let's... They're going to they're gonna do something with Ryback finally, instead of just having him just come out, hit people in the face, job out, and then we're good. Well, that's... That is what his gimmick is. It's supposed oh, right. to be, you know, oh, right. you the mean, Goldberg thing. Yeah, the Goldberg thing. I'm surprised that they haven't been tallying up his wins and losses for the year yet. Nah, it would have been too obvious then. That's for reasons. But, and it was a couple months ago, or a month ago, I did check out the actual wins and losses, and including House... Uh, House shows he is up into the fifties. Yeah, that's a, that seems about right. That seems about right for uh, what he's been out for as long as he's been out. He should sooner or later he should be getting like to the one hundred match. They're gonna be amping that up a little bit. They're yeah. not. I mean, they're not gonna make it frontline name, but it's gonna be like this is gonna be important to watch sooner or later. 
And I bet you five bucks it's going to be a job out match, no problem. Versus Santino? Uh, Santino... Does Santino still have the U.S. belt? Yes, he does. Good lord. Think about that for a second. I have been... We have been so disconnected from the U.S. title, I have to think about that. I have to think, who has the belt now? Yeah, I. it's it's just like the European title now, at this point. They still have a European title? No, they don't, but it's just like it. <laughs> ah. Okay, so we have a uh, backstage segment with Daniel Bryan and Sheamus. Sheamus gives uh, Daniel a uh, wedding gift that, obviously, he didn't get wed. And it was a book. The book was called How to Last More Than 18 Seconds. Zing. Zing, I guess. Hey, Sheamus. Uh, not to comment on anything, but it's called How to Make a Better Match Than 18 Seconds for WrestleMania. You know, people are kind of sore about that. They don't like you because of that reason. Now, now I have to admit that Sheamus has been pulling off some pretty good matches lately. You know, <laughs> notwithstanding, True. you know, the WrestleMania match. True, but I think... But I think, uh... That whole 18 seconds thing is going to hold over his head more simply because the fact that, well, he won a match, 18 seconds, WrestleMania. Yeah. People don't want that. Let's just put it that way. And you were writhing about that when we, when you, I oh. heard about that. I was, I was giggling the entire time you talking about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I was kind of, you know, irate. But, As you should be. Yes, I was. But speaking of Sheamus, he does have a match versus Cody Rhodes. Ah, uh, Mr. Rhodes. Yes, Mr. Rhodes. Um, you pretty much knew how this was going to turn out. Uh, Sheamus was going to come out on top. Ziggler comes out uh, halfway through the match, pretty much, I think, a scouting thing with his briefcase. And he's about, he's thinking about uh, turning in the briefcase when someone comes down the ramp. Who could it be? Oh, it's our good buddy Chris Jericho. Applause. So he throws him into the ring and uh, Ziggler eats a bro kick. Yay! And then eats a code breaker from what I remember. Yes, and then, yes, it's a buffet of finishers. And Zach and uh, Dolph Ziggler is getting the main course. If I, if you prefer some weird metaphor. Right. Since we mentioned Santino Morella, he does have a match versus uh, Antonio uh, uh, Serraza. Serraza. Cesar. Uh. I, I apologize. I can't pronounce this correctly because it was a couple of days ago since I last watched SmackDown. <laughs> uh, basically, he's the guy who's been uh, hanging around oh. with Oxana. If... Oh, Mrs. Boobs. Gotcha. Yes. And... Because that's the only thing we remember her for is that amazing rack. And Not the sound pig. And her inability to, you know, the accent, too. Yeah. I'll ah. just leave it at that. Keep the accent. Ah, I... Yes. Sorry, I'm just more focused on something else. <laughs> I know, it makes me sound... Well, why problem, should you be it? focused on that while we have a great wrestling match <laughs> to focus on, you know? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so, so but... yeah. <laughs> so, yes... What? Many men touch each other, or a hot woman with big breasts. No, it's oh all about... God, I am such a weird man for choosing the breasts. <laughs> uh, Mr. Caesar, I'm going to call him Caesar for now on. I know that's wrong, but he's Caesar now, and he wins with a mild, uh, modified, um, like a Styles Clash sort of a maneuver. I don't know the actual name of the maneuver, but it's. It's like 
a faster Styles Clash where he doesn't spend so much time, you know, setting it up. Pretty much lifts the guy up and then falls forward. All right. Upside down, yeah. So what? So was that for like a U.S. match or? No, what that was match? just a regular match. But I... go oh, ahead. It's an exhibition, huh? Yeah, I think he's going to be getting a title match pretty soon since he did beat a champion. Yeah, and no offense to Santino. I mean, I think he he has his fans, and that's all good and all, but what? He has not done a damn thing with his U.S. title, besides, you know, power walking, and he's been doing that for years now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Next up, we have Damien Sandow versus Yoshitatsu. Yoshitatsu still has a job, apparently. Yeah. Actually, he's one of the few things I like to watch from superstars. Um, this was a squash match. Big surprise. Eh, go figure. Let me guess who got squashed. Yoshi did. Damien then gets a microphone and says, I'm a martyr. I'm gonna beat people up because I'm the martyr. Yeah, we're gonna sit, we're gonna let you sit on that to think about that a little bit. Thank God, you know, thank God that enough. The normal wrestling audience is dumber than a brick because if they actually put some thought into it, insulting our insulting our listeners right there. Because if they, because if anybody actually puts some thought into it, it's like yes, yes, he, this guy is supposed to be proclaiming how smart he is, and an event where you're nothing more than a big hunk of meat beating on another big hunk of meat. Right. But we do have a main event. We're just blasting through this. We have Rey Mysterio, Del, Alberto Del Rio, Kane, and Daniel Bryan for the number one contendership to the World Heavyweight Championship. Whew. Yay. Mouthful. So, I thoroughly enjoyed this match. This was a hot, this was a uh, fast-paced, action-packed, uh, fatal four-way. Well, let's take a look at... Why don't we dissect this a little bit for people to understand. Uh, who do we have in this? Okay, we have Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio, okay, that's the Lucha Libre style, Kyle more aerials type things. That is definitely a very fast fast style, and that's an exciting style. Alberto Del Rio comes by the same background, uh, but isn't as flashy as Rey Mysterio is. He's more ground, he's more ground guy. Yeah, I, but he still can be very fast and very entertaining. Mm. Daniel Bryan, which do we honestly have to talk about Daniel Bryan and how good he is as a wrestler? Yeah, possi- possibly one of the greatest uh, technical wrestlers of this generation. I would call him this year's Chris Benoit, but that would be an insult. Well, <laughs> he's just as long as he doesn't do the flying headbutt so often. He doesn't do the flying headbutt. I think it's actually more appropriate to call him more Dean Malenko than Chris Benoit. Uh, well, it's sort of. And then the last one. Kane, which... Um... He's not fast, but he hits hard. Uh, well, three out of four is good enough. It's a 75%. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing. Kane is the one who pretty much dominates 75% of this matchup. Hmm. I think he, I think it's that mainly it's that bump afterwards that he got with the Undertaker. Yeah, possibly. I think after seeing Raw, he might be doing a, a tweener thing. He may be going face. Eh, that's never a good thing for Kane. Now, I'm going to go on a little tangent here, if you don't mind. Casey. Go ahead. Kane is never good as a face, simply because he was always, he's always built up as the big red monster, and monsters are always heels. What he should be good at is beating up people, looking menacing, and just towering over people, speaking in a very evil way. And trying to do that in a good way is ne- will never work. The only person who was ever able to pull that off is, uh, I think, 
Mick Foley when he was mankind, but then again, he had multiple personalities at that point and knew how to knew how to do different ones. Hmm. Well, we'll see if this new face mask cane will work or not. We'll I don't know, but yeah, um, Alberto Del Rio uh, steals a victory. With this one, which, uh, make, which makes sense because a lot of what he's been doing has been promoting promoting him up. I think he's going to be the new world world champion, or at least he's going to be the reason why Dolph Ziggler gets the championship. Or it's actually better. We could actually have him try to interfere with the match, cash in his check. Dolph Ziggler be one of the first, be the second guy to lose to uh, getting his. Uh, getting the belt afterwards because pretty much they've been building him up so much that he's going to get the belt. He's going to get the belt. He's going to get the belt. belt. That would be a good enough thing to do. Like say, Oh, he doesn't get the belt. Well, we'll have to see. But yeah, I, I did this particular SmackDown was, I think pretty good. Um, it was, I don't know. It, it was kind of uneventful, but it for well for the Sheamus and the main event matches. You know, I think that was pretty good. I guess that's the main all. Main event can, can always make something a bit better. Okay, so now we get on to Monday Night Raw. It was. Let's see. I guess you can say everyone or. The building, or the roof, was on fire. Well, technically, yes. Technically. Yes, the, technically, the building was on fire for a little bit, and they somehow promoted that. I don't know why. Um, yeah, the stage caught on fire on both sides, the right side and the left side. Now, considering that their uh, test, the, their pyro test, I think was the first one with this new stage setup. Because if you remember last week, they didn't actually do a opening pyro sequence. It makes logical sense of why that happened. And so, it, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. It makes logical sense simply because, well, they're testing out pyrotechnics in this new set. You're never gonna, you're never gonna be a hundred percent sure with new things, so you gotta test out. And thankfully, nobody, thankfully, they got all the bugs worked out for the show. And if they didn't, and nobody had to get torched along the way. Yeah, this is true. However, there, this was a pyro free raw, which is fine. And it, it. Let's see. One other comment I want to make about the stage is that they did keep the general um, stage setup from last week, but of course they didn't have the left and right side, so they were pretty much off. I almost wanted them to put down one of the old big tarps in a green or red spotlight, like in the old days. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah, those tarps are go are gone, man. Yeah, they have to like go under Titan Towers to find them. <laughs> They're buried. Okay, so to the actual show here. Uh, what do you think of this show? Personally, I thought this was good. I thought this was a good show. I thought it actually made was actually pretty decent as the show goes. Though I'm still kind of prevalent on this three-hour thing. Yeah, it's not going to be a permanent thing. They say it's going to be permanent, but you know, you know, it's not going to be permanent. Yeah, this this is like three hours of episodes. Like they can't they can't do this simply due to the fact that well, no normal people just can't sit for three hours to watch something. Yeah, and like. Halfway through the show, I kind of forgot what happened, but thankfully they put in lots and lots of video packages to, you know, pad out the time. Yeah, that's another reason why I think it's not, it's not going to stay, sincerely because, well, 
they've been pat they patted the shit out of this. They patted this more out than a teenage girl going to the prom. Oh, snap. So yeah, the show the show starts out with CM Punk and with to a mixed reaction. Which makes logical sense. Uh, he gets up on the mic. He gets the mic and he sits down on the announcer's desk. He goes, he, he he's upset at a lot of things. In particular, he's upset at Jerry Lawler, where Jerry made the uh, comment that Punk has turned his back on the WWE universe, sensationalism, journalism stuff. And the fact that the show should be about the champion, who is CM Punk, of course. Now, this is obviously a... Punk really doesn't do heel-face sort of thing. He's always pretty much been a tweener. Pretty much. I mean, he says what he wants to say. And this is just another example of it. And I find myself agreeing with a lot of what he says. Now, me being a big CM Punk mark, that's notwithstanding. <laughs> hey, I'm with you on there. I'm a, I'm a CM Punk guy, but uh, if it came out of anybody else's mouth, I would have agreed with him even more. I would have just agreed with him the same. The thing should be about, you know, the should be about the heavyweight champion. He should be the main focus about it. Yes, that makes logical sense. Yes, especially, yeah, especially since, you know, when you look at the cards from the pay-per-views since WrestleMania, it's all about John Cena being, you know, last on the card. It's, I mean, the evidence is there. Yeah. And that's a, and to be quite honest... With that type of evidence, <clears throat> excuse me, with that type of evidence there, that just shows how much they don't, they just focus on, like, John Cena. I know he sells the merch. I know he's the guy. He's the go-to guy to get all that stuff on. But he's not the champ. You're undermining the championship by focusing on somebody else. Yeah. So, so after Punk talks a bit, Big Show comes out, and he does the old, you're, you're the only champ because I interfered in the match, so therefore I'm the most important guy. Yeah, you know, basic, basic evil heel, I'm, I'm Mr. Awesome, and uh, you all can eat shit, all that stuff. I'm a giant. You can't beat me. John Cena comes down and beats up the Big Show. Yeah, yeah we're not going to touch that. Okay. And mm -hmm. AJ comes out saying, I'm going to make my first main event. It's going to be Big Show and John Cena for number one contendership. Yay. Yay. She actually looks... AJ actually looks real good in a suit. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, let's see. Commercial break. Daniel Bryan tries to talk to AJ. He doesn't get the nerve to. He goes away. First match. Santino Morella versus Alberto Del Rio. It seems like every single time that Alberto Del Rio gets a number one contendership, he has to beat up Santino for it. <laughs> I think it's simply because Santino can mark a, can uh, job out like a pro. You know, as much shit as we give Santino, he is a decent wrestler. Uh, yeah, it's it's the gimmick, which you know, is if he, kind of his if, problem. The gimmick is the problem. If he was given a better gimmick, or at least less annoying, like goofy guy gimmick, less annoying goofy guy gimmick. It wouldn't be a problem as much. I mean, the guy can actually wrestle. And they actually give him time to wrestle. It would be great. Yeah, I 
I can't believe I'm bringing this up, but Eugene comes to mind. Oh, good. That's uh, that's going back. Yeah. Okay. A- after that mind trip, um, let's see. Alberto, he wins with his submission, and then he vows that he won't compete until SummerSlam. Yay. So no wrestling for you, I guess. Okay, that's fine. I mean, if you really need three weeks off or something like that. Um, and I didn't know that, you know, a wrestler... And I know this is like kayfabe thing. Like, I, I didn't know that a wrestler could just say, like, I'm on vacation now. Fuck all the rest of you. Yeah, I have to go fail a drug test. I'll be back in a month. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to get about drug test guys. Because <laughs> there's going to be something interesting a little bit later. Uh, Daniel Bryan tries to go into the room again, and he fails. After another commercial break, Brodus Clay dances. Then Vicky Guerrero comes out, and then she dances. You know, I'm glad I missed this part. I must have been at the bathroom this time. <laughs> and then the most unlikely character comes out to save us all. Damien Sandow comes out again. At, yes. this, at this point, a little intellect would actually be a long way coming. Yes, please, stop the madness. He talks how he's a martyr and all that stuff, and then he beats up Brodus Clay pretty handedly. He beats up Brodus Clay, or does Brodus Clay beat him up? No. Sandow beats up Brodus Clay. Huh. Pretty handedly. That's weird. <laughs> so... <laughs> so Sandow... Excuse me, I, cause, excuse me, I got backlash from that. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Sandow's... You know... Going up against... I have... Yeah! Yeah, we're trying to get a... Folks, we're trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. We got nothing. I mean, sure, I can understand why Sandow is going after Brodus Clay. He's basically doing the Sandman thing in the early relaunch of ECW, where Sandman would pretty much beat up anybody who had a gimmick. So he's like at the anti-gimmick. So, Uh, Damien Sandow... What they were doing, trying to do with Edge with all the stupid things. That didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, that the stupid things. Um, let's see, what's next? Daniel Bryan, after two other times, he finally barges in, and what does he get? A match. Yes, he got. He gets a match against Sheamus. Hooray! Now this is actually. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna actually have to tell the truth right here. Is I forgot. I fell asleep a little bit early, taking a nap. This is where I came. In. This is where I came in in this uh, match. Okay, and there was a poll about what kind of match. There was it was either going to be a false count anywhere, uh, no holds barred, or the street fight. We all know it was going to be a street fight, so it's a street fight. However, they did it through Twitter, and I don't know how they tabulate votes via Twitter using a hashtag. Because it's some sort of technology they probably got or something. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense because I don't know how you can get percentages and total votes out of that. So whatever. It It's another one of those polls where they throw out two, like, two uninteresting answers and then the one that everybody is going to go to. So it's that thing again. Trust me, I've analyzed Cyber Sundays before. <laughs> as as sad as we are. Um. So yeah, this was, a, you know, this being a street fight, it was really, well, you know what you're gonna, gonna get with a street fight. Yeah, you're gonna get a lot of chairs. You're gonna get a lot of hitting. You know, just people hitting each other with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Which actually, they didn't start hitting each other with a bunch of stuff until like midway through the match, which actually surprises me. They started out very technical, worked outside the ring, 
And then they started grabbing chairs. They grabbed a kendo stick. Heck, you know, the old classics. Yeah. And the sleet, steel steps. Which I was actually surprised that uh, Daniel Bryan can actually lift. Because he got the second half ones. Yeah, those things are pretty heavy by the looks of it. But then again, they're hollow on the inside, so they probably aren't as heavy as they look. They just look heavy, probably. And they're still metal. And, you know, it takes, you know, four people, regular people, to lift that thing. Yeah, that's that's nasty stuff. So, yeah, um... Sheamus comes out with another victory with another bro kick. And but, let... uh, not to, sorry to stop you, but there's actually, this is actually interesting to me because notice how, did you notice that uh, these guys took a lot of headshots with that chair? Um, I noticed, well, there was a spot in the corner and I noticed a couple kendo stick shots. To the yeah, head. Yeah, I'm just thinking they're like they're penal. They're gonna get penalized like crap for that. There's like a, mar- I think that's like a ten thousand, pe- like a hundred mark uh, penalty off of your next check for doing crap like that. Well, yeah, it's. I think the actual policy is unprotected. Uh, shots to the head. I mean, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the rule book in front of me, so meh. Uh, I bring it up for simple reasons. It's nice, actually. It's actually kind of nice to see the old school, t- old school hair headshots. I know the reason why they were canceled, but you know the nostalgic part in me just likes seeing that little hardcore, you know, head smashing in. Right, and. And also with a little bit of clever camera work, you can pull it off with the shoulder rather than the head and still make it look like it's to the head. Well, of course, naturally. Everything is everything is camera work nowadays. Yeah. Always has been, always will be. But yeah, um, after the match, uh, Daniel Bryan wants a doctor. He needs a doctor. He's not going to get out of the ring until he gets a doctor. Kofi Kingston comes out with a with our truth. And <laughs> Go ahead. In a suit. And of course he's escorting little Jimmy down. Yes. I think I think it's weird to see our truth in a suit. I think it's the only time I'm able to say monkey suit correctly. Oh wow. <laughs> to, all, to anybody who's African American, I apologize for that joke. Oh, okay. Um, but <laughs> let's get to the spot here. So Daniel Bryan, he he says that everyone's crazy around here, especially our truth with little yeah. Jimmy. Oh, really? So what he does, Daniel goes over to little Jimmy. Pats him on the head, and then kicks him out. Almost to the, almost just like the Snitsky incident with the uh, doll. <laughs> and just, just the size of that kick, and where he's supposed to be trajectoried out. He's, uh, let's just say like we put an imaginary, let's put an imaginary person right there. Not. Not the actual, like, little Jimmy. Let's just imagine that if a person, if a little kid was there. Let's see, where that kick you... must have really fucking been powerful. Because <laughs> it launched his ass right out of the... Right out of the ring and a few feet away from the from the arena. Yeah, he's in the third row, for sure. <laughs> so, apparently Daniel Bryan has been picking up tips from King Leonidas about kicking people. Ah, uh, yes. So, and then, right afterwards, the men in white from last week come out with AJ. And after a bit, you know, they walk down the ramp to our truth and it's like, AJ's go, no, 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 not him. He's not the crazy one. The crazy one's in the ring. Yes, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and he gets escorted. 
Yay! He gets Dude. escorted out because, let's be fair, nobody likes to see a child get hurt. Not even an imaginary one. Yes, so he gets <laughs> a psychiatric evaluation, which we'll get to later. A uh, little side note, Vince McMahon is going to be on SmackDown, and he's going to introduce the new GM for SmackDown. And Buck says it's Teddy Long. I want to see John Laurinaitis back. No, I don't want to see John Laurinaitis back. <laughs> he's he's working house shows, so he's yeah. not completely gone. <laughs> okay, so third match of the night: Titus O'Neil versus Kofi Kingston. I want to talk about jo- jokes and bad taste. Yes, A W. <laughs> <laughs> A-W. And I quote, he's like Kobe in a Colorado hotel room. Oh, that's paraphrasing, but whatever. Oh, wow. The, mes- the message is still the same. Yes. Now, Titus par- O'Neil rapes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's something to really promote your guy for. <laughs> I uh, with a statement like that, you're figuring that he's trying to undermine his own people. I mean, I can understand how something like that can just come out, but it's like we demonstrated a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> hilarious still. <laughs> Okay, so um, Titus Hello. Titus actually has a finishing maneuver. He uses the sky high, which I love. I love that maneuver. Yeah, that's actually that is a fine maneuver. But uh, let's talk about right before the act, act where A W throws a shoe at Kofi. Oh yeah, that's right. I almost thought that was a tennis racket. No, it was the shoe. I know. At, at, at first thought, I was like, oh, he's trying to be like Jim Cornette. Okay. No, he throws a shoe. And then you, and then everybody thinks the same thing together. Who throws a shoe? Honestly. <laughs> so he gets the, the shoe thrown back at him. Titus goes for the sky high and beats Kofi. They beat uh, Kofi, and then there's Egbra, and they keep bragging about it. And you know, I'm not, I don't mind like bragging, bragging heels about that sort of thing. That's sort of what they do. But if you track their record of winning, they're not winning. The primetime players did not are not on a winning track. <laughs> kind of hard to say, like, they're, they're awesome, they're awesome, they're awesome. Yeah, but it's PA, you know. It, yeah, whatever. Okay, so, um, I think I got my notes here mixed up. Was there a psychiatric part one here? Yeah, there were two psychiatric parts. The first was obvious, was from, uh, pretty much was a yes-no thing where Daniel Bryan just screaming, just screaming yes, 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 yes. Okay. So that was there. Okay, so then after that we go to uh, CM Punk backstage as he explains himself to John Cena. And he goes, he pretty much tells it like it is. Where he says he doesn't care who wins. At He's going to go to SummerSlam. He's going to be whoever comes out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, basic basic stuff like I'm basic stuff uh, and I'm I'm enjoying you know I think I think it's it's really hard to gauge CM Punk as like a heel face thing cause you know that's my that's my forward thinking is like he's you know there's parts of heel but parts of face he is a big tweener and I you know and you don't see it that often but I think but after all this stuff, I think he actually does pull it off kind of nicely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we have the fourth match. It's a Heath Slater match. Hooray! 
Yay! And he challenges any current superstar. So who comes out fresh off of a 60-day suspension? It's Randy Orton. And we all rejoice. Yes. Yay. Yes, the moral of the story, don't do drugs. You only get 60 days off. Yeah. And the third time, you go to TNA. Nobody wants that. Oh, hell no. <laughs> so this was pretty obvious squash. RKO. The RKO looked pretty nasty, to be honest. And then I, yeah, it was, it's Randy Orton. Cause all of his RKOs actually look good. He's been pra- He has been doing a lot of practice with that maneuver, and you can tell he has gotten a real good hang of it. Well, yeah. Um, after that, we have the uh, reuniting uh, Chris Jericho and Christian on the same team. Which is awesome. Versus Dolph Ziggler and The Miz. <laughs> ah, so, um, this was, I guess, pretty solid, I guess. I was... uh, This is a weird match to me, because I want to say it's good because of Kristen and Chris Jericho's parts. Yeah, I know I'm not giving crap to Dolph Ziggler or The Miz on this one, but quite honestly, I think Christian pretty much handled a lot of this match. Yeah, I I do agree. Um, this one ends with uh, Christian giving a thumb to the eyes to, uh, to The Miz. I think and, it was... uh, Yeah, and then, uh, Chris Jericho comes in with the code breaker, if I remember correctly. Yes, and so faces win. Yay! Yay. Yay. But then again, but then, all of a sudden, uh, Dolph Ziggler comes in and smacks him across the head with the briefcase. Oh yeah, briefcase shot. Why? That. Because he can, obviously. Yes, he has a briefcase. He's going to use it. Smack. Ooh, what? Of course, who what? Who wouldn't? <laughs> uh, but actually, there there is one thing that I found interesting is when he did that headstand. Oh yeah. I know that. I know that's part of his gimmick, but that actually was pretty impressive. I know it's it. It's almost like how I throw out another name. Billy Gunn used to do the uh, vertical suplex, the uh, delayed version that he stood there for like thirty to forty-five seconds. How he used to do that. Those are always impressive to see. It's like you know, it's the small things that count. Right. So we have part two of the uh, psychiatric evaluation, the ink blots. Now I've. Now I gotta tell a story about this. Okay. I was looking at the ink blots the entire time, and I couldn't think of anything but penises. I don't know what this says about me, but I think it means I need help. <laughs> then again, then again, I've watched the accepted commentary so many times, and. The entire thing they say, like, you know, Rorschach tests are nothing more than just genitalia. So okay. that's firmly planted in my head. So we have the conclusion of the ink blot, and it's a goat face, and he's all upset. It's like, why is this a goat face? I am not a goat face. I do have to agree with him. He's more dwarf. And then it, eh, not really. His beard's not that good. But I think, it's, I think it's homeless a, lumberjack was the best. It's a it's a Pacific Northwest thing. <laughs> so apparently, everybody in the Pacific Northwest just has beards like that, huh? Oh, there's there's a few people that have beards like that. It's I guess you can call it part of the hipster thing, but hey, whatever. Yeah, I don't... Personally, I don't know. I live in Pennsylvania. You don't want to know what we have down here. It's not pretty. Amish? 
well, but, well, the Amish are awesome. I mean, the redneck, the hicks that come out from the valleys. Oh, yeah, we have them, too. It's called Eastern Oregon. <laughs> okay, yep. moving on. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting off topic. Yeah, we're going to have to do, like, a supplemental episode of just, you know, <laughs> just of nothing but whatever. Okay, so moving on. Yes, yeah. sixth match. Lord Tensai versus Tyson Kidd. It's another squash match. Albert wins with the Albert Bomb. And... Start beating the crap out of Tyson Kidd because... He's Prince Albert. And he gives him the old... uh, Backbreaker. That he used to do as the A-Train. Which was nice. I never... Like I said, I'm going to say this again, and I'm going to say it again, again, and again. You know, just because you're a sadistic bastard does not mean... I know they're trying to go with, like, he was trained in Japanese, and this is how they taught him to be. This is how they taught him to be. But I'm sorry. I have to... I'm sorry. I still don't like it. I'm going to... That's what I think of all Tensai matches. And says, and I'm going to say that every time we have a Tensai match that ends this way. Yeah... Um, so after the Albert bomb, he pretty much, you know, c- continues to beat up Tyson Kidd to the point where the referee has to reverse the decision. Yay, I guess. I don't know. didn't know that they still reverse decisions like that. But then again, that makes action. Then again, if you think about it, that does kind of make sense. Yeah. But then again, if you think about it, how many, how many decisions would have been reversed on Alberto Del Rio by this point? Well, it, when dealing with a submission, uh, oftentimes they would do a five count after the match is uh, completed, has been decided, actually. True. You, you see it sometimes, because a lot of the wrestlers actually do react to the five count. True, but then again, he's just like... And when you see, like, Alberto Dario, he's just racking the arm back and forth, back and forth, and... I'm sorry. If I was a ref, I would say, stop that, stop that. If you don't stop that, I'm going to reverse my feeling. Right. But then again, that's me. That's a personal personal pet peeve. About how I hate just, like, people just beating up people after the match. It's like, you know, can we get the match over? The match is over with. Can we just move on to the next one, please? Okay. Well, in the next scene, we have Daniel Bryan's uh, psychic, or not psychic, psychic. Whatever. His evaluation, part three, he's deemed sane. So he has an obsession with Charlie Sheen. I found that interesting. Yes. So, after he's deemed sane, the lights go red. And Kane attacks. Why? I don't know. Because Kane attacks? Yes. (laughs) I guess that's going to be the feud. Kane... And Daniel Bryan fighting because Kane is Kane? Yeah. Uh, That makes about as logical sense as anything else we do. Okay. Now off to the main event. But before that, we have the 14th longest reigning WWE champion to do commentary, CM Punk. Which I always like CM Punk on the commentary. He's actually oh. a decent commentator. No, oh, he's the best in the world at commentary. Oh, that's ju- now you're just being silly at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like to have fun with these gimmicks. Okay, so the main event time, Big Show and John Cena for number one contendership. It was an alright match. Yeah, it's alright. You try to call a John Cena match. You try to call a Big Show match. You know, you put them together, and it's like, okay. This is going to be slow, it's going to be big, and there's going to be a lot of punching in it. Yes. And that's pretty much the entire match. Yeah, and it turns out to be a DQ finish. Now, what happened here was that uh, both John Cena and the Big Show were outside the ring. Big Show throws John Cena into CM Punk. And CM Punk obviously gets pissed about it. Like you would. Hey, if somebody threw a fuck, threw a 250-pound fucker on my 
Found my way, I would be pissed as well. Yeah, grab the title, smack someone in the head with it. But he didn't use the title this time. Um, but he did force a disqualification. He says that, ha, 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 I have beat the system. There's not going to be a number one contender. Like, we all know what's going to happen after that. And I called it, I called it. AJ comes out. It's a triple threat. I think I think the world called it. That that was so obvious. You might as well just have that have that just pointed out at the beginning. You might as well just have CM Punk go, go there. Obviously, it's a both disqualification match. So we all know, know what that means, right? Yeah. <laughs> I still want my victory. Yes. Okay, so... It's yeah. the small things, like I said. Yes, the small things. So, that was Monday Night Raw, the 1001 episode. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was good. I was, I'm interested to see SmackDown, to see who's a new GM. I'm still counting on Laurinaitis. I'm counting on Long, simply because... They've had him as the GM so long. I think... Pun in, bad pun in pen, intended, but, uh... Yeah, I guess uh, tag team matches aren't the same with him, you know, missing. Yeah, it's kind of... Like, Teddy was always... Teddy Long has always been a good GM, in my opinion, and it's actually good to see, like, a face GM after once in a while, because, you know, there are so many heel GMs. You know, you get annoyed after a while. We'll see Paul Hammond back as SmackDown GM. That was awesome. But then again, Paul Heyman's just pure awesome. Okay, now here's a long shot prediction. Vince, okay, they mentioned about controversy with Vince, you know, announcing GMs in the past. Yeah, especially on this episode of Raw. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Vince McMahon announces as a new GM Vince Russo. <laughs> if you could pull his ass away from TNA oh he he doesn't work there anymore if they did that I would be shocked but then again Russo is at his is at his quote unquote best when he's under the thumb of McMahon which is true but the then, the management really doesn't like him all that much. But <laughs> it's just one of those things. I would not. I would be surprised if it was Russo, simply because of his uh, connection to TNA. Because well, he is one of the major players with what uh, they got TNA off the ground. Right. And you would have said the exact same thing about Bischoff. Then again, Bischoff was a part of... was literally a part of what made WCW better until it all went to his fucking head. Yeah. But... <laughs> uh, it should now be for, interesting. Now for... Big call-out names that I think they're going to go with. Huh. Vince Russo is a big, good pick. I'm trying to think, who would be crazier than Vince Russo? I can't think of one. The only obvious thing that comes to head is, like, they try to go retro and get, like, Hulk Hogan. Oh, shit, I know who would be perfect. The Ultimate Warrior. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Having Warrior back. Just to be insane. No, what's better, we get Spoonie to do the Ultimate Warrior, and he's the new manager. Oh, God. It will... Uh, if that happens, it would be glorious. Uh, it's never gonna happen, now, mind you. Yeah, it, you have a better chance of the Iron Sheik doing it. 
with a live mic. Of course, you have to bleep out half the things he says, but hey, they tape it on <laughs> Tuesdays. Oh, you know, because people are never going to understand what he's saying. He's going to be saying, Fuck the ultimate warrior! You're a fucking... I'm, I'm, I'm horrible with our, with my yeah. cheek. I'm better with my Macho Man. And they're not going to bring Macho Man back. That's so... <laughs> That sort of necromancy does not exist in this world. Yeah, Vince doesn't have that much money. <laughs> Vince doesn't have that much power. <laughs> if he did, there'd be a lot of differences. Okay, uh, okay, we're off on a big tangent here, but yeah, um, <laughs> we're out of time, and <laughs> this has been this has been Dropkick, and we'll see you next time, where we try to take apart SmackDown and Raw as we go on the road to SummerSlam. And next time we'll probably be less crazy. We'll see about that. You know, minus racial jokes aside, like, again, I apologize for that one. That was in bad taste. Okay, then, we'll see you next time. Bye!